Jade here from the Hungry Vegan channel. Today I want to talk to you about something that you've probably heard a lot of times if you are vegan, if you are transitioning over to this lifestyle or just thinking about this lifestyle and trying to find out a bit more information and if you change over, be prepared for this question because it is the number one question that vegans are asked. How do you get your protein? So I, I read in a lot of forums that a lot of vegans get actually annoyed by this question and to be to tell you the truth, yes, yeah, sometimes it can get frustrating because <laughs> you get asked it quite a bit. However, it's a fair question. We are so brainwashed into thinking that we need actually animal products in order to obtain protein into our body. It's something that it's just that tunnel vision thinking that that's what we need and it becomes really indoctrinated into your whole brain and I guess if you're somebody who's come from the whole bro food thing you probably it, it is a question because all the gyms and everything it's all protein you know and it's uh, that bro sort of mentality that um, you need excess protein and nowadays with all the paleo diets and the um, Atkins and I quit sugar diets and all these kind of different things that have excess meat in them and are telling everybody that this is a healthy way to be. Um, that of course people are actually thinking, okay, that is how you're going to get your protein. And you know, it's a fair enough question. Look, I have to admit, I got on this whole before I became vegan, I got into this whole protein bandwagon too, and I know there were days that I was probably having 50 to 60% of my diet protein and I was wondering why my skin was getting worse and worse. I've had skin problems my whole life and my skin was getting worse and worse and I was getting these really bad nodular acne all along my jawline. It was so painful. I've got some photos somewhere. I'll see if I can sneak them in. And it was just absolutely horrible. And I was, you know, sculling down protein drinks and all those kind of different things. And even when I decided to make the change to a, at this stage it was a plant-based um, diet, and I'd only planned on doing it for 12 weeks. Well, we're nearly up at two years now and I'm still here. Um, that's because I love this lifestyle. Um, but I was thinking, how, how am I going to get the amount of protein that I'm having now? So I was having a lot of protein powders, the, the plant-based protein powders in my diet when I first changed over. I was adding in um, to my smoothies, silk and tofu and all these kind of different things because I was thinking, oh my goodness, I'm not going to have the same amount of protein I was having before. Anyhow. I kept seeing the hashtag 801010 on all these vegan foods and I actually had no idea what it was. I was thinking, oh, is it some sort of camera code or whatever? And I started flicking through the 801010 thing and I'm, I'm just seeing all these food pictures. I was thinking, oh, that's strange. This is 801010 for food pictures. So I Googled it. <laughs> when in doubt, Google. So I Googled it and I came up with the um, Dr. Douglas Graham diet which is an all fruit based diet which i don't follow an all fruit based diet however it had some really really good information in it and i now to this day follow the 80 10 10 philosophy in my macronutrients anyhow but i started reading the book and i found it so interesting that we as a consumer we actually you don't even think how, how much protein you're actually supposed to have. Now, the I always knew the nutritional dietary guidelines were somewhere between 10 and 35%, so they give us this sort of broad amount. There's no real set sort of amount. But um, they have done studies, and the average American actually only lives on 16% protein. So why do we need this excessive amount? And the funny part is if you have too much protein, you end up, it out anyway so what's the whole point not to mention the damage that you can cause to your liver and your kidneys and other organs so you know <laughs> I, 
this whole protein madness really in um, this world is sort of getting out of control. Um, we actually only need 10% of our diet to be protein. So how would a vegan get protein without having all those animal products? Okay, there's so many different ways, but the first way I'm going to look at is the same way the cow would get it. And what do cows eat? Grass. So I'm not asking you to go out to your backyard and mow your lawn and eat your grass because <laughs> I know if I started suggesting that to people I'm trying to change over to a vegan lifestyle, they're going to be like, where's those food pictures you had? Because I'm not eating grass. But I'm not saying you have to do that, but we really need to start looking at the amount of greens we're putting in our diet. And it's essential to be having a lot of greens in our diet. So I'm talking about your spinach, your kale, your cos lettuce, broccoli, um, bok choy, all your Asian greens, silver beet, all greens like that. They're the kind of greens that we need to be having a lot of in our diet to be getting natural plant-based protein. And just for an example, and I'm going to use this specific example because you can picture it in your head, the cos lettuce, you know, the cos lettuce, it comes like that, and you see them in all supermarkets. They're in the fancy lettuce sort of section. A cos lettuce actually has eight grams of protein per head of lettuce. So that's a pretty substantial amount. And I generally, when I have a salad, I'll have a whole one of them in my salad. So there's eight grams as it is. And we're only looking at needing 10% of our diet. So it's about 0.8 um, grams of protein per kilogram of your weight. So let's say, I'm just averaging out. Let's say I need about 55 grams of protein a day. Um, there we go. I've got eight grams just from a lettuce alone. Um, so that's a great way there. We've also, you um, like your rolled oats, your brown rice, your whole grain pastas, they've all got protein. Even your fruits have protein in them. They have um, got smaller amounts than say your greens or your whole grains, but you've still got protein in all your fruits. Absolutely everything that you actually eat has protein in it. So uh, it's actually, when people start to educate themselves on nutrition, they can actually start to realize, hey, I don't need animal products to obtain protein. So, that's some of the ways you can get it. Now, of course, a lot of people, um, a lot of vegans out there, they may use tofu or tempeh, soy milk, plant milks. The list goes on and on. on. There are a lot of um, forks sort of meats that you can get nowadays that they actually look like real sort of meat, so to speak. I don't generally eat them. Um, however, they have got a substantial amount of protein in them. Your legumes and your lentils, they are so high in protein, so they're a good source of protein. And the great thing about plant-based protein is it's not just protein that you're getting. You're getting your protein, your carbohydrates as well, and you're also getting a great source of fiber for your body. So all of that from one source of food. Whereas if you're eating meat, you, you still need all the other elements. Um, but if you're not having that meat in your diet, you don't need all those elements. It's just there for you. So that is um, pretty much how vegans get their protein. There's no going without. There's no deficiency. There's no need to panic and, you know, go out and, you know, buy out the Sun Warrior protein powder shop. There's nothing... There's nothing to worry about that you are going to be deficient in protein. If you are following a whole food plant-based diet, you will lack nothing. You, sure, uh, you certainly won't. I have still got a couple of boxes of protein powder unopened in my cupboard, which I will never use because I don't even like the taste of them, to be honest. I will never use because I've got no need to. I eat um, a very healthy natural plant-based diet so i'm getting all the all the nutrients that i need so if you are planning and i hope you are of coming over to this lifestyle or if you or if you're already on this lifestyle and you're having panic attacks and you've gone out and bought all these 
high protein foods, stop worrying. Have a look at all your whole plant-based foods that are out there and fill up on those. This is the healthiest thing for your body and your body is going to scream out with joy and say, my goodness, hallelujah, I've been waiting for this for so long. It's going to be so happy because you're going to be so much healthier. And not just that, when you cut out those high levels of protein from your diet, you're going to have far more energy. And on a positive note, for somebody like me, I've lost all that horrible nodular acne and I'm, I know without a shadow of doubt that was that was part I know there are a few other components but that was a huge part of my skin problems so have a look when you buy your foods even you know look at your um, nutrient panels I don't generally have any nutrient panels on my food because I eat um, I, I eat an unprocessed food diet. I don't like eating processed foods. But if you do eat processed food, have a look um, at your nutritional panel. You always see how many grams of protein in there there are per 100 grams. Download um, a calorie counter app and you'll be able to see with every food that you put in there exactly how much protein you are getting. And it'll also tell you your calorie ratio. I believe the healthiest way for anybody um, to eat is 80% minimum of carbohydrates and then your 10% protein and your 10% fat. So for, a final thought for me for today is <laughs> don't worry about protein. <laughs> okay, I'll see you soon.